Vision Network. One of the core values of energy that I see that you guys are is blazing the trail. How yes. has that been coming along? Yeah, so blazing the trail, uh, honestly, as more or less the, the first uh, indigenous company mm -hmm. in the solar uh, business, okay. uh, we were the first to make it possible, okay. indigenous now, for people to do surveillance, for people to monitor consumption, mm -hmm. monitor performance, okay. and you know, for upfront fault management. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, before now, uh, you only find those in imported products. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and another thing that we're doing differently is in our service, our after-sales service. Okay. You know, if you check most of the people, most of the companies that are into uh, solar home systems, okay. not many have the kind of multi, multiple layers of after-sales service that energy has. Today, we have the, the customer experience team okay. ensuring that our customers are happy. Okay. We also have the field team that will visit customers and ensure that your systems are working optimally, mm -hmm. where there are, I mean, they would also do routine maintenance, mm -hmm. ensure that the systems are, you know, working perfectly. Mm -hmm. So we have multiple layers of after-sales customer service mm -hmm. that our peers do not have. Mm -hmm. A lot of them, <laughs> they, they are scared by the possible uh, scale of uh, mm -hmm. concerns. Mm -hmm. and, and you know what? Uh, the energy, the grid is mm -hmm. a major challenge in solar um, you know deployments mm. because you have cases where high voltage low voltage all of those kind of so a lot of our competitors would rather just sell their equipment mm. and you know turn their back okay. but we don't only sell our products to customers we stand by them with multiple layers of support okay. to ensure that they get maximum value for their products okay. hey, Ragabi, welcome you to this new ride a digital ride that takes you into the lifestyle experience of innovation, tech impact, and new business frontiers. This is DG Vision Network. On a weekly basis, we keep you well informed of developments and trends. Now the tech ecosystem is impacted politics, business, public, and private enterprise management, plus how the new digital life can transform your business. I am Bayero Agabi. Join us. So, um, Energy is a clean tech organization, like uh, you said, you mentioned. So, Energy uh, has been around for about nine years plus. Nine years. Yeah. Wow. So, Energy provides clean and um, sustainable energy okay. um, through solar power, actually. Uh, and um, we have uh, several models. Um, and that way, uh, you are able to plug into whichever one suits your use case. Okay. So, um, energy serves uh, various sectors. Uh, you have the solar home systems, which uh, basically serves the residential customers. Okay. Yeah, you have those high capacity that are applicable for commercial and enterprise customers. Okay. And we also deploy solar solutions to even telecom, uh, the telecom sector. So beyond product, I mean, uh, sales of equipment, we also provide support services, after sales services to our customers. So what we do basically is we, we ensure that uh, we start off with the proper, the, you know, um, you know, the best of quality in terms of components. So we, we are responsible for uh, the engineering of solar solution. We get our supplies um, designed by us, uh, get our supplies from outside the country, and then you know assemble that and you know sell here locally in Nigeria. And after sales, like I said, ensure that we support our customers from the one. You know um, we have systems that do surveillance where we are able to manage faults, we are able to uh, you know, manage events and performance of our systems as deployed to the customer. So, um, and, and we even provide uh, you know, flexible payment plans, oh. yeah, such that 
regardless of your purchasing power, you are able to find one of the models that suits your, you know, your, your disposable income that you can afford. So that's basically how our energy has been, you know, supporting the, the energy transition. And that's that's our, our core business here. Now, in Nigeria and Africa as a whole, okay. one of the main issues that the continent has been struggling with is energy. That's and correct. with an option of the kind of energy, energy uh, supply, how much do you think this particular option of energy is sustainable in the Nigeria economy ecosystem? Yeah, so solar today is even more, um, is, no, is a no-brainer. Uh, judging by the recent realities, mm. uh, the you know uh, removal of fuel subsidy mm. and the constant you know uh, increase in the tariff mm. from the national grid. So if you if you plug in your numbers, uh, you can tell that even commercially, you know when you look at the finance financial uh, side of things, it's it's more it's cheaper for you to you know, transit to adopt solar. You know, if you plug in the numbers, whatever um, investment you put, it, put in today, in as early as two years, depending on uh, your current source of uh, energy. So if, you, if you're currently using diesel, for instance, okay. I mean, if you, if you have a high capacity generating set, you could, you, you know, you, are, you, will, you will have saved the cost of Investing in solar, you would have made you would have made a savings that equal to that investment mm -hmm. in as short as two years. Wow. And solar solution today, particularly the type of solution that we deploy, will last you up till from eight years to ten years. So you can imagine an investment that has a life of eight years, ten years, and you already it already paid for the cost of the capex in mm -hmm. two years. So the extra eight years. It's just value, free value, if you like. So, wow. so it's, but then, you know, that initial cost, you know, I must say is not what everybody uh, is able to, to afford, you know, but for those that have the, you know, the disposable income, honestly, if you switch today to solar, it's cheaper. Those that have the, the, the power, they don't even, they don't even, you know, drag it. They don't even talk for long. They just switch because they know it's cheaper for them. Um, we all know technology evolves yeah. from time to time, from year to year, from century to century. How sustainable is are your technologies if new ones come in before the end of the eight-year period of investment? Yeah, I mean, that, that's a good question. So if you look at the trends today, um, I can tell you that for a long time, I don't see any other source of energy um, pushing solar out of the market. Uh, talk about hydrogen, largely still in development, and in fact, some of the results coming in is already negative in terms of our sustainability and all. So look at yeah, gas is like the uh, what is you know trending right now, but. Nigeria today, we don't have that infrastructure to effectively distribute uh, gas to every home, you know. But if you look at it for solar, solar is readily available, you know. Uh, it's there for you to, to tap into, to plug into. So I, I honestly don't see um, any threat. I think in a long time to come, uh, solar will still be relevant and will still be able to compete with uh, a lot of the other alternatives. While cost is you know, increasing in almost all the other uh, you know, alternatives, in, in the case of solar, the, the prices are crashing and, and the, the, the data is there. So I think solar is, is actually here to stay. It will be around for a long time. Now let's move to smart cities. Okay. Now smart cities, we all know there's a, a need for optional or alternative energy sources which so many countries that are looking at smart cities are actually delving down to find reliable and sustainable op um, energy options how 
does energy services fit into energy supply for smart cities? The IoT, you know, the services, the evolution, does it come together or you are still trying to align it? Yeah, it comes together perfectly. Uh, because today, if you look at our own offering as energy, our offering comes with is, is an IoT system. Okay. You know, it has a controller that you know has an IoT uh, device in it. Okay. So you could monitor usage. You could program as many, depending on your use case. Okay. There's a lot you can do in terms of intelligence. So for smart cities solar will still be very very relevant it's just a matter of integrating uh, your whatever sensors you have whatever controllers you have integrating it to our own uh, you know controller okay. and and then and there you go everything you want to monitor all the signaling that you require you can you can do and all the communication mm -hmm. data transmission across the internet it's possible Today, our own solution is, is IoT based. The policies in African countries will affect Africa achieving it along with the rest of the world by the 2050 um, aim? Well, uh, honestly speaking, I know Africa is like the least contributor <laughs> in the world. You know, what we emit today is so, so negligible as compared to what the developed world emits. Mm -hmm. But having said that, um, but I don't see I don't see much uh, regulatory you know action. I don't see so much being done by our leaders, mm -hmm. you know, at uh, you know improving uh, carbon emission. Honestly, okay. uh, besides what the private sector is doing on their own, I don't see so much in terms of awareness, in terms of policy, in support of uh, you know net zero. Uh, but I know that <clears throat> the private sector, the much we are doing, will significantly help to drive down cost. You know, it's just that most of the time, the solutions that would help us achieve this are not very cheap. Mm. So the reach, you know, the, the, the number of the volume of people, soldiers, more or less, net zero soldiers out there, uh, is still very few. But I am optimistic that Africa's economy will get better and more people will be able to plug into those initiatives that at the end of the day helps us to go close to net zero. What do you think will happen if Nigeria as a country decided to go 80 on alternative energy and 20 on the traditional energy? 80-20. Hmm. 80-20 is, is very, I think is a, um, it's it's very it's it's a big dream for me. Uh, don't forget that uh, the twenty, the traditional means of uh, generating power, to a large extent, is still the cheapest. Yeah, I mean, you imagine a a, 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 a thermal station uh, somewhere, so, I mean, generating several megawatts of electricity and distributing. So it's the way it is. Uh, that economies of scale favors traditional power generation. So it will still remain cheap, you know, for a long time. And unfortunately in this part of the world, there's a poverty, is very, poverty level is very high. So it's very difficult to have that balance. We can't be talking about 80-20 when all the odds are against you. Mm. So I, I know that it's, it's possible, but uh, it's not something we can achieve very, very fast. But I mean, they say the best time to plant a tree was 15 years ago. The next best time is now. So even if it's, 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 it's difficult, but not, not impossible. Innovation and lifestyle. Please like, share and subscribe to this channel. www.youtube.com slash digivation network.